continuing on with the red. If you don't want to get too much in one spot or you'll get a line um, where it dries and that'll take some work to, to get it that line out of there. Don't leave a puddle sitting on there, and that'll help you avoid some of that. This cloth's starting to wear through on me and starting to leave some um, some marks, so I'll just reposition the cloth a little bit. At this point, it's not too big a deal. There's no uh, shellac in this, so it won't stick it down. Um, I do have a little dent here in the in the tail end of the guitar. Um, I'll wait till I get all the stain done and then I'll come back in later with some uh, crazy glue or CA glue and fill that dent in and then if I find any other dents or or little uh, little dips or dives as I go along I can always fill those in with uh, CA after I get some shellac on the surface and then scrape and then sand them flat. Well, that's it for the red right now. Um, let's move on to a little bit of amber. I want a teardrop shape to this burst. Um, I want a pretty, a pretty small burst. Um, so just as wide as the bridge footprint, which is going to be about six inches. This amber just gives it a nice, nice glow.
Don't like my burst to be too lemon yellow in the center, so I want kind of an orange. And I'm not gonna go in there with the amber right in the middle. Uh, as we blend the colors, we may pull a bit of amber in, but I'm not gonna worry about that right now. If I did, I'd work with the pad really, really dry um, to try and just get a real slight amount on there. I'm gonna stop with the amber. Um, I'm gonna start with the brown. Sometimes I find it easier to get a consistent shape when the guitar is flipped upside down.
the back and sides of this guitar, I already have a few coats of shellac on them. So if I were to get a drip, the alcohol is going to eat into it, but at least it shouldn't stain the wood. So I should be able to go back and sand that part out um, pretty easily and, and get back to where I was at with my French polish um, before I had the drip. But we'll try and avoid that just to make life a little easier. Make sure everything stays even and try and darken up the sound hole and grain um, with the burst. So wherever it remains different colors, try and keep that consistent. If you find you're getting an area where it's just not taking stain or not getting darker, um, of course you can always use a more concentrated stain. Um, another thing I found that helps is just take a break, walk away from it for a while, let the alcohol all dry off the surface and let the wood get a little drier. I'm going to open up the black now and, uh, and work the outer edge. Um, I'll have to go in and, and work with this a little bit more later. Probably go and uh, get some red on the on the very outer edge of this and then work with the yellow again and try and start in the center with the yellow and then work my way out and and blend it all in as we go out from the center Historically, Gibson sunbursted just about everything. Um, the majority of their guitars, not to say that they didn't make some natural guitars. Um, there's always a few models, a few natural J35s and, and arch tops and stuff. But for the most part, uh, Gibson liked doing sunbursts. Um, some people say it was to cover flaws and in inferior wood. Um, I don't, don't know if there's much truth to that. Um, conversely, Martin did very few sunbursts and they always called their shade tops. Um, so if you see a vintage Martin guitar from any era, um, they're far more rare than a natural finished one of the same model.
Also, Gibson sunbursts tend to have a teardrop shape um, where they kind of focus in on the sound hole or above, just above the sound hole. And uh, Martin sunbursts tend to, if they're original, if the guitar hasn't been refinished, they tend to follow the outside shape of the guitar um, and come in just a short distance. But even in the upper boat, they'll have um, some lighter colors and they'll tend to follow along. You can always tell a, a refinished um, one really quickly because a lot of people, um, when they were refinishing them, followed the Gibson thing and they'll have both sides of the fingerboard um, completely blacked out. So it's just a, a different look. Um, I like both. I really like Shade Top Martins and, and ones that are, they look really cool. Um, and uh, I love my Gibson Sunburst too. They're just different. Going back to the brown now, right with the same uh, same pad. Trying to get this outside edge really dark. I don't have any running down yet. That's a good thing. I don't want it to run down my binding and into my sides. Make kind of a mess. It's, I can clean it up, but I don't want to. It'll save me time. And also there's no point in cleaning off the rosette. Um, you come in afterwards and scrape the, the finish or the, the stain off the rosette and the binding, but there's no point in getting started in that until you've got at least a couple of coats of whatever top coat you're gonna put on. You wanna get those top coats on, let them dry thoroughly and then come back in and you can scrape your binding and clean up your rosette. Uh, try not to gouge the rosette too much because it will, uh, um, it's harder to get level again. That's another potential application for some CA glue. If you do get a few nicks while you're scraping this off, uh, you can come back in with some CA glue and level it up to the rest of the finish. back in with the brown again. I don't want to get it so dark on the outside edge that you can't see the, the wood grain. Not that there's anything wrong with that, it's just a pref personal preference on this build. I'd like to get it as dark as possible without hiding that grain. I want to see that the grain stand out. I want the upper boat to be as uniform as possible.
Okay. I think we'll uh, stop with this uh, one that I've been using for the brown and the black. Put the lids back on these. There's some. I did get a little drop right here. We'll fix that later. Okay. I have two different concentrations of red that I mixed up. Uh, so I'm gonna go in with the deep red now. I'm gonna go over the entire thing. Or not the entire thing, I'm gonna go over the outer edge. Fold up some old dish towel, put in a little piece of linen rag. I like doing the sunburst, it adds a little bit of extra time to the guitar, not a ton. Um, I just think that uh, in some cases it really makes the wood pop. There's cases where uh, nice natural finish is really beautiful too. But for these ones, I didn't want that. I wanted to do the sunburst. This kind of sunburst really makes a normal piece of spruce pop. Rid of that. Just gonna go to the bright red here on the very edge of where we go. Orange. I guess I'm working my way out and then back in again. I'm probably out. So. Stop with that for now. Let's go back to the yellow.
can even this up a bit. It doesn't have to be perfectly symmetrical, but. not quite sure not quite happy with it can't hurt anything to step away from it for a while you can always come back and work on it some more blend colors together work on your transition between the lighter colors and the dark Try and smooth them out as much as possible. This is only the fourth one I've ever done, so I'm by no means an expert on it. I'll show you the first, I got that over here. This is the first one I had done many years ago on a mandolin that I kit that I put together. It's really blotchy. I didn't know about the egg egg white thing back then, and the uh, and of course with the recurve or the mandolin where it dips down, you get more end grains. So you get more blotchy blotchiness where the end grain is in both of these parts, and the lighter in the middle. Hit it with the yellow one more time. Uh, it could stand to be darker right in here. I don't know if the wood will take that stain. We'll, we'll let it dry a bit and uh, try again. And I'm seeing a line right here from where I kind of, as far out as I went, I want to make sure I take care of that and don't leave that on because once I put the top coat, um, that, that line can stay there. So I want to work some darker color out here as I go and um, try and eliminate that. Uh, it's still still pretty blotchy um, with the transition, so I'll 
keep working on that. Just refold my rag here. Try and get a light corner to work with. light over here we're gonna need some dark stain for that area let's use this to try and wet down the whole area and get any uh get any streaks that i got out of it pull any of that dark stain over not really i'm just lightening that area up so i'll have to come in with a darker pad and darker stain Concentrate on that. Um, you probably don't want to watch me try and work that out. Um, I'll come back with the, I'll shut it off for now and, and uh, let it dry and work on it a bit. I'll come back and show you the results. <laughs> 